Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be discussing some background information on the introduction to flexural deformations. So this is a very important topic that's typically covered in either a mechanics of materials course or maybe a structural analysis course. So to get started, the first thing we want to remind ourselves when we're dealing with flexural deformations is that pin and roller supports restrain displacements and fixed supports restrain both displacements and rotations. So this concept is typically first introduced in statics. And then again, in a mechani mechanics materials or structural analysis setting, you're going to um, tie that in with this idea of flexural deformations. So let's uh, draw a couple of illustrations that um, help us visualize this point right here. So if we have a pin or roller support, there's a pin support and here's a roller support. And let's say that we have a member that um, is attached to either of these supports. Well, if the member that these supports are supporting is loaded, of course, the member is going to deform. That's what we would call a flexural deformation since it's a flexural member. And what would happen is in the vicinity of a pin support or a roller support, um, you're going to still have deformation. You're going to have a rotation and a displacement in the vicinity of the support, but you will not have a displacement at the support. So for example, if um, the member that this pin support is supporting is loaded, you may get a deformation that looks something like this, for example, okay? Now notice that uh, these little segments here have deformed, right? So they have some type of displacement. You know, maybe this is a, a we could call that delta one and maybe call this delta two, okay? Um, but at the support itself, there is no displacement. So at this particular support, delta is zero, okay? Now let's talk about rotation. So um, another type of flexural deformation is a rotation angle along the length of the member, okay? So a rotation angle, which we typically call theta, is going to be computed as the slope of a tangent line on the elastic curve. So for example, at this support, if we put a tangent line here, then you still are going to have a rotation angle theta, uh, maybe this is theta one and this is theta two, on either side of that support. But, uh, but again, the displacement at the support is going to be zero. And that's because uh, this pin support, it allows rotation, but it does not allow displacement. It restrains the displacement. And then uh, something very similar would happen at a roller support. So you could have a a displacement of some sort uh, here, but, uh, but at the particular support right here, the displacement is zero. And then as you start moving away from the support, it becomes non-zero. Again, that's an illustration of a pin and a roller restraining displacement, but not restraining rotation. So again, if we put a tangent line here, if we draw a tangent line, we can draw a rotation angle, maybe theta one and, and theta two here, okay? Now, what about a fixed connection? Well, if you remember from statics, a fixed connection uh, oftentimes looks like this, and I'm gonna draw a little member here, and you know that member can keep going. And let's say that you have some loading uh, on this member that is being supported by this fixed connection. So um, a, a typical deformation diagram for a, um, a fixed connection may look something like this, okay? Now here's something you need to be very careful about. Fixed connections, as we stated here, fixed supports restrain both displacements and rotations. So at the fixed connection right here, the displacement is zero and the rotation angle is zero. And so, at this connection, you see it's characterized by a little taper. It's uh, the deflection diagram is is nearly horizontal at the uh, specific connection, 
And that is to indicate that not only is the displacement zero at that connection, but the rotation angle is zero at that connection. And again, that's just a reminder that fixed connections restrain both displacements and rotations. So to help us um, visualize and understand this concept a little bit better, let's look at a few more um, illustrations of loaded beams and um, let's sketch the shape of the elastic curve for each of these situations. So I'm gonna write example here, and I'm gonna say sketch the shape of the elastic curve for each beam. Now, remember the elastic curve, this vocabulary word right here, elastic curve, it means deflection diagram. So I could also word this as sketch the shape of the deflection diagram, right, of, of each beam. So let's draw a few of these here. Let's say uh, part A, let's say that we have a cantilever beam, which has an applied load P at the free end, and of course it's fixed uh, at the left support. And let's say that we have a beam uh, part B here. Let's say that this is a fixed, fixed beam. So it's fixed at both ends. And let's say we have a, a P1 load here and a P2. And I'm gonna also state that P1 is bigger than P2. So P1 has a bigger magnitude than P2. Um, let's go ahead and say we have a beam C here and I'm gonna draw beam C as a beam with a double cantilever overhang. So this is a simply supported beam with a double cantilever overhang. And I'm gonna say we have an applied moment M at the far left end. And then beam D, let's say that we have a compound beam with a fixed connection at the left support, an internal hinge somewhere along the span, and a roller at the right support. So I'll make a note here. This right here is an internal hinge, and hopefully you remember performing analyses on these kind of systems in a uh, statics course. And then let's say that there's a uniformly distributed load here with a magnitude W. And then let's do one more. Let's um, have one more visual example here. Let's say that this is uh, beam E. And let's say that this is a three span continuous beam with a pin and then a few rollers here. And let's say that we have a uniformly distributed load on this middle span and call it W. So again, what we're gonna do in this uh, little example is sketch the shape of the elastic curve for each beam. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sketch the shape of the elastic curve in red on the original diagram so we can help visualize what's going on. So let's start with um, A. Now if you wanna maybe pause the video and do this on your own and then you know play the video and see how close you get, that would be a great exercise for you. Regardless, you need to write everything down so you best learn this concept. So let's look at beam A right here. We have a cantilever beam with a point load at the free end. So this point load is gonna cause the free end to want to displace downward, okay? Now because of this fixed connection over here, you're gonna have no displacement and no rotation at the fixed connection. So what's gonna happen is the shape of this elastic curve is gonna look something like this, okay? Let me see if I can draw that a little bit better. Again, something like this, all right? Um, one more time, okay, that's okay. Now this right here is a non-linear smooth curve. So the shape of this deflection diagram is not straight. It's a, it's a curve. It's got curvature to it and it's smooth. So I know my freehand sketching doesn't look as beautiful as, uh, as um, yours might. So uh, just make, make note that this should be a nonlinear smooth curve right here. All right. And then at the fixed connection, we have delta equals zero and theta equals zero. Okay. Let's move on to um, 
beam B. So in beam B, we have two fixed connections, right? A fixed connection at either support, and then we have two point loads in the middle of the span. Uh, P1 is bigger than P2. So you're gonna have a taper here, just like we had before. And then we're gonna have it kind of transition back upwards to a taper um, near the right support, okay? So because P1 is bigger than P2, the maximum deflection is going to be a lot closer to P1 than it is P2. So you see this is non-symmetrical. This is a non-symmetrical curve. So we'll make a note here. This is a non-symmetrical smooth curve, and it's non-linear. And again, at the supports, um, we have delta equals zero and theta equals zero at both supports. And you're also gonna uh, actually generate an inflection point near the vicinity of the support somewhere. And if you recall from calculus, an inflection point is where um, the, the elastic curve or a curve in general changes concavity. So uh, you're actually gonna have a little piece of this that's concave down near the supports, and then it's gonna hit this inflection point, and then um, in this region, it's gonna be concave up, okay? Um, let's move on to part C. So in beam C, this bending moment is going to try to bend uh, this left segment downwards, and so you're gonna actually have a deflection diagram that looks a lot like this, okay? And again, this is gonna be a smooth curve, and you're going to have um, zero deflection at the uh, hinge and the roller here, okay? Now, what about the rotation? Well, the rotation theta in the vicinity of the pin and roller is non-zero, okay? So we'll make a note here. We're going to say uh, theta is not equal to zero at these supports because again, a pin and a roller are free to rotate, all right? Um, let's move on to part D. So part D, we have a compound beam. This is uh, still statically determinant, but it's a compound beam. We're gonna have uh, this uniform uh, loading on the left span and no loading on the right span. So what's gonna happen here is this uniform load is gonna cause this left span to start with a taper and deflect downwards. And then you have this internal hinge, which is going to give you a kink in the beam. And then you're gonna have a linear increase back to zero here. So in this first uh, half span, this is gonna be a non-linear smooth curve. And then on this right segment, this is gonna be a linear segment, okay? And so the reason why is this uniform load is causing this segment to flex. It's causing it to curve. And then the presence of this internal hinge is uh, you, you allow rotation here and we allow deflection because this internal hinge, it's not, it's not an external support. It's an internal hinge. So it's like a, maybe like a bolted connection, for example. So it's going to create a little kink here, which will give you a deflection here, okay? So you will have some type of deflection here that is not equal to zero. Now, the right segment here is just gonna be along for the ride. And we know that because there's no applied loading on this right segment. So this right segment is not going to try to flex. It's just along for the ride and it's going to um, have a linear segment here. Okay. And again, want to point out this is, it's very important. This is an internal hinge, not an external support. So at an internal hinge, you will have a kink there. All right. Now let's look at the last uh, diagram here. We have this statically indeterminate three span beam that is loaded with a uniform load in this middle span. So what's going to end up happening is you're going to get a deflection diagram that looks something like this. Let me try to draw that a little nicer for us. That looks something like this. Okay, so at all four of these supports, you notice that what is zero? Delta is zero at all four supports. 
and also at all four supports, the rotation angle is not zero. So basically another way you can think of this is this uniform load acting on the middle span. It's pushing this middle span down and then the two adjacent end spans are popping up in response to that, okay? And again, you do have inflection points in the vicinity of these of these uh, internal, uh, of these uh, rollers here. Um, and that's where the elastic curve changes concavity. So notice that you have concave down um, in, in the uh, end supports and you have a concave up curve in the middle support. So you will have inflection points in the vicinity of these two rollers here, all right? So again, this video is just meant to give us um, an introduction of the idea of flexural deformations without any real calculations. So hopefully you found this helpful and you can be on the lookout for some other videos where we actually apply calculations to actually compute values for these flexural deformations. So hopefully, um, you, uh, you found help from this video. If you liked it, please hit like and subscribe and be on the lookout for some follow-up videos on the topic. Thanks for watching.